the site of an accident is usually an unsuitable location for providing proper medical care. It may be hazardous, dirty, and inaccessible. For this reason, after first aid treatment has been administered, the injured person should be transported to a medical facility as soon as possible. It is normally the responsibility of the person giving first aid to see that the patient is transported safely and without being subjected to further injury, unnecessary pain, or shock. An important rule to remember when transporting an injured person is never move the patient until he has been examined and his injuries have been protected by properly applied dressings. Moving a patient is precise work. It calls for close teamwork and great care. In emergencies or when a stretcher is not available, various carries may be used. Carrying the patient in the arms and the two-man carry are carries that should be used only when it is positively known that no injury will be aggravated by such handling. The most effective method of carrying a patient without a stretcher is known as the three-man lift and carry. This method is used to transport injured persons for short distances and through narrow passageways. When preparing to lift the patient, each bearer kneels on his knee nearest the patient's feet on the least injured side. One bearer is positioned opposite the patient's shoulders, another opposite his hips, and the third opposite his knees. The bearer at the patient's shoulders places his hands under the patient's neck and shoulders. The bearer in the center places his hands under the patient's thighs and small of the back. The bearer at the feet places his hands under the patient's knees and ankles. At the command, lift patient, the team in unison slowly raises the patient and supports him on their knees. At the command, prepare to rise with patient, the bearers slowly turn the patient onto his side so that he rests in the bend of their elbows close to their chest. With the command, rise with patient, they all rise slowly. The team of bearers can now, on command, step off in any direction with the patient. The important thing is that all movements must be done in unison, with all members of the team moving at the commands of a leader. There are several types of stretchers used to transport injured persons. The army stretcher is most often used. It consists of two poles held apart by folding cross pieces and covered with stretched canvas or similar material. The stretcher is tested before placing a patient on it, and the person testing it should weigh as much or more than the patient. The Stokes Navy stretcher is a woven wire basket made to conform to the human body. The patient can be strapped into it securely and placed even in a vertical position for transportation. It is used primarily in metal mines. Stretcher boards have the advantage of light weight, easy storage, and simplicity in use. Like the other stretchers, stretcher boards should be tested before a patient is placed on them. A Bureau of Mines utility splint stretcher is a very sturdy and useful stretcher that can be constructed inexpensively in any plant or mine carpenter shop. In an emergency, a satisfactory stretcher may be improvised with a blanket, brattice cloth or similar material, and two poles or pieces of pipe. To prepare to lift the patient onto a stretcher, each of the four men kneels beside the patient on one knee, the knee nearest the patient's feet. One man kneels opposite the patient's shoulders, another opposite his knees, and the third and fourth facing each other at his hips. The man at the shoulders places his hands under the patient's neck and shoulders. The man at the knees places his hands under the patient's knees and ankles. Both men at the hips place their hands under the patient's pelvis and small of the back. At the command, lift patient, the bearers raise the patient, taking care to keep his body level. At the end of this movement, the patient should be supported on the knees of the three men on one side. If the patient is suffering neck, back, or hip injuries, 
he is lifted just high enough to slide the stretcher under him and not to the knees of the kneeling man. The fourth man places the stretcher under the patient. Again on command from the leader, the fourth man places his hands in position to support the patient, and on the next command, the bearers lower the patient to the stretcher. When the patient is secured to the stretcher, the four bearers take positions at the head, the foot, and on both sides at the center of the stretcher. On command, all bearers stoop and grasp the stretcher and raise it together. On the next command, the two bearers in the center shift one hand toward the front of the stretcher and support this end while the man at the foot turns around to a marching position. On command, the bearers step off with the stretcher in unison. Whenever an injured man must be transported, it is important that the handlers or stretcher bearers move together and as gently and steadily as possible to prevent further injury, unnecessary pain, or shock. 